Okay guys, we're in the shop today and uh, if you saw our last video we were checking out a diesel heater and uh, ended up coming to the conclusion that that wasn't really the sort of solution that we wanted to have for heating our tiny cabin. So we came up with this furnace. It is a direct vent furnace made by Williams. It's 14,000 BTU. It says there's no electricity required. It draws outside air and it also vents the exhaust to the outside. And we'll show you what that looks like. Um, has a matchless pilot igniter. And it's made for high altitudes. And since we discussed that we're gonna be at about 4,100 feet, that was kind of an important feature to us. I did get the kit that's going to change the jet in here um, so that it measures the right amount of fuel for this uh, altitude that we're going to be at and uh, so we'll get this thing opened up and we'll take a look at it and uh, see what kind of condition it came in. We did get this from one of the big three box stores um, and that was not Home Depot or Lowe's so you can figure it out from there. They had it, uh, actually had the best price on it and uh, I don't know if I described it yet or not, but they sell this in two different versions. Okay, it's a model 1403821. And this is a liquid propane version. They also have a natural gas version. We're gonna save the box here since we're gonna have to put it all back in here and uh, transport it up to the mountain. So we'll get the jet changed in it, see what sort of uh, components that we need to complete the installation. Uh, there are a few things that are required uh, to install it. It includes most of the parts, but we do have to get a microvolt thermostat for it. And we're gonna need to get um, some gas components and tanks and things like that, regulators. assume that this is the gas kit here. Take a look at that real quick and see what we got. So it does have the instructions for the installation of it. It did come with a package of orifices. That's basically what the kit is. And they're just little brass nuts that have a precision drilled hole in them. And we're going to be using the, uh, the middle one of the kit, the number 60. And that should be the one that's correct for our altitude. Okay, so the cover was on top of the box. And then we do have some loose... That parts. Yeah, go ahead and set that down on the floor. Put this stuff off to the side. Oh, this is our template. So that's the template for cutting the hole in the wall. And the uh, instructions does have specifications for if you're doing a new construction to frame out the opening for this inside the wall and we'll probably be doing that because we can. We don't have, uh, have any structure in the wall right now. Basically this gives you the place to put your holes and uh, where to, it recommends where to put gas lines and things like that. How high there. off the floor and from the wall and Some sort. Yeah, it did, it did mention that it came with the mastic. Um, it looks like some kind of putty tape in here that it comes with so that you can seal the flange to the outside of the wall. And then here's their instructions. Yeah, it did come with the instruction manual. I got this as a PDF file off of the 
uh, seller's website and uh, printed that out so that I could kind of go over it while we were waiting for this to show up. It actually arrived pretty quickly, so that was a good thing. It's on. There we go. Okay, this is the part that goes outside the wall. And it's marked top so that you know which way it's supposed to be oriented. It does have some fiberglass uh, batting on the outside to seal it. Yeah, and you can see on the inside it's it's got the internal part for the exhaust that's going to be your hot gases and then the outside part of it is where the air comes into the unit. Loose here. Doesn't weigh much this way. I'm sure. Everything's really sharp. This is, uh, it's all sheet metal, so be real careful when you're handling it. We'll find out. Sure. How far? It basically just drops over. This door here opens up so you have access inside of it. That gives you access to the uh, inner components and everything when it's when the cover's on it. But since we need to do a little work to it, we'll just go ahead and take this cover off and set it off to the side for now. Where does that gas regulator for altitude go? Is that down here or up here? Or? I'm just curious. Or over well, here? <laughs> some, some assembly is required. I don't know if we mentioned it does include the owner's manual here. Um, like I said, I already printed these off. Uh, and there was some screws in here. Um, I believe a couple of them for the holding the cover on and then other ones are for attaching it to the wall We need to get inside of this thing and the first thing it tells you to do is to remove the control door from it um, That's this large Rectangular assembly here that everything else is attached to Only problem is uh, one of the screws is underneath of this panel here and there is no way to get to it um, directly so we're going to take this panel off here, which it doesn't describe in the instructions, but it is obviously necessary to gain access to that uh, control door. And it also makes clear in the instructions that you want to keep the control door screws separate. So these, these screws here have to go back in that same location and you don't want to mix them up with anything else. Okay, something I was going to mention is this uh, furnace is 14,000 BTU, um, but that is its input rating. So that's actually the amount of heat that you put into it. And then its heating capacity is 9,800 BTU. So in other words, you're losing a pretty good amount of heat out the uh, stack on it. Um, and then on top of that, uh, it has a portion in here that says if you're going to altitude, um, that for elevations above 2,000 feet, reduce ratings 4% each 1,000 feet above sea level. Um, so to me, that means we're going to 4,000 feet, we're gonna lose 16% of the, that final BTU capacity to uh, heat with. But, since we have a really small room, that's not that big of a problem, but one of those things you have to be aware of when you go to altitude is that you're going to need a larger furnace in order to compensate for the uh, loss at altitude. And the reason for that is that as you're at a higher altitude, you have less oxygen, 
And also when you have less oxygen, you have to reduce the amount of fuel you can burn, which is the reason why we're replacing the orifice in this to a smaller size. And then that keeps the air to fuel ratio balanced in it. So it's able to burn that amount of fuel, but you lose some energy in the process. So let's go ahead and take that control door off like the instructions say. Okay. There's, oh, that's the gasket right there. So it does have this uh, heavy iron burner in here. And then this is the orifice that we're going to need to change out right here. And it's telling us that we need to remove this burner from the bracket, but uh, I don't know why these two screws here are kind of corroded. and. Uh, this one here does not want to turn, and I really don't want to break a screw off inside that uh, iron bracket right now, so I think I'm going to avoid that. So we'll see if we can just go ahead and get the wrench inside of here and get that orifice out without um, trying to tear that burner off of there. This is a 7 16 wrench. So there's the orifice that was in it, um, so we'll change that out with the new one. Part? That says made in Taiwan right there. Oh, okay. So our our box has an American flag on it. it. Says made in the USA, but the controller unit here for the gas says made in Taiwan. This rope thing is the gasket that you have to take care not to damage. It said in instructions to remove it while you were doing this. I don't see any reason for doing that other than it would just cause more complexity to what we're trying to do so you tear it up and you'd have to buy a new one so it was really easy to uh, to just kind of fish the burner out of here once we figured out what's going on and then we just drop it back in replace the screws and uh, We'll tighten up this one that I loosened on the, okay. they called it a bracket on there, but uh, it screws directly into the mounting on the burner if they call that a bracket. And Debbie's putting the screws back into the control plate. So all the components for your thermal couple and sensor and, and the gas going uh, to the pilot are up in here. You've got your gas going into the uh, orifice on this side that goes inside the burner. Uh, control unit down here and a uh, place to attach a thermostat is in this area right here. That's all outlined in the instructions and then this is the igniter for it. and. Uh, this black wire up here runs to the igniter. 
then there's a window in here so that you can uh, view the lighting process when you're lighting it. I didn't tighten any, tighten any of these really. Yeah, just get them all in and then tighten it up when you're done. We'll put this back in the box and uh, we'll get it transported up into the mountain and the next time you see this heater will probably be an installation video. Um, we're going to have to finish our the wall that's going to be installed to both on the outside and on the inside and then, uh, then this can be mounted up on that and we're going to need to collect a few parts uh, as far as propane cylinders, regulators, hoses, fittings, and uh, more than likely be your typical three times to the hardware store to get your fittings. If you've ever done any plumbing or anything, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs>